Welcome guys to the D&D Storyline, presenting Fa Quendi, the Divinous Source, Hexblade Warlock. Fa Quendi, in its name, represents two meanings. Fa means elf, and Quendi means corrupt, in the language of the elven. Corrupted elf. That was the name that was given to me by the village that I recited for a small moment. You see, when wings started to spread on the side of my head, it was clear to them that I was what I was being called, a corrupted elf. My corruption came from both my parents, a half-dragon and an elven angel. My father was a half-dragon. He still had the power of a full dragon, and as a half-dragon, he turned to his human form where he had a claw that he fights as a hexblader. My mom was an elf angel. She herself was great in the power of healing. Both are dead for committing the act of meeting with each other. I was never told how they met, but I was told that an angel should never be with a dragon. I heard they were judged by their races, each defending themselves in a fight. Towards the end, my mother was struck by an angel's spear, and my father died by being turned into his human form. His claw that contains power of the hex blade was shattered and a piece of fragment was all that was left to me. Of course, this wasn't what I was told, so I can only do so much as to trust its resources. During my youth, I was cast out of my homeland. During my upbringing, I was sold, beaten, and because I resembled parts of the dragon and part of an elf, tiny angel wings on the side of my head. As time passes, I learned that I was able to retract those wings into my skin and control my appearance to be more of my true nature, an elf. However, if the right dragon or angel saw me, they could tell who I was from the get-go, so I stayed far away from Dragon's Den or Divinus Art in the temple of a cleric. As I grew, I learned the art of the Hexblade through the tiny pieces of claw that I inherit. Divine power coursed through my vein the moment I hit 17. And as I learned from the world, I became a smuggler. I knew the area of the sea and the land very well, for I was sold many times and traveled through those land and sea by it, until the point of my power manifesting at the age of 17, which I escaped with. You know, casting repeatable messing in someone's mind can be very, very interesting. It turns them to madness. During my travels, I was keen to money. I loved it. I was told that I could earn a lot of money in a town called Hethro. There I took a lot of bounties and learned the art of becoming a great bounty hunter. I will be tasked from minuscule to great bounties. During an S-class bounty, I partnered up with two other great warriors. One was a Goliath warrior named Buzz and the other warrior. Barnes Burrow found a mountain dwarf. During an epic battle with the two warriors smattered through the front line and me healing from the back line, we managed to kill 25 goblins that stood in our wake. Yes, we took injury, but that is why I went with them. I am a healer. As we put the goblins into the cargo, each of us pulled the wagon back home to Hethro, where our bounty manager contacted our client. He looked at the all 25 dead bodies and jumped in great excitement, whispering, Mine. All mine. As he stripped the armor of the dead goblin. The bounty was an X-Class, for these goblins had a unique armor enchanted with spell immunity, meaning no spell can harm them. Lucky for us, he, we had two strong warrior. From the moment of that adventure, me, Barnes, and Buzz started to venture more into bounties together, making a name for ourselves as one of the greatest bounty a hunter alive. And as our name preceded us, we got more bounties, and with more bounties, more reward. On one bounty, we rescued a woman who kept annoyingly yelling that she needed to head to a specific spot. 
refusing our help, not giving us enough information, and just blabbering that she needed to go. But our bounty said she was stolen by bandits, or so she led to believe. As great bounty hunters, we finished our bounty first. During the night, she started to mumble some word as if she was casting something, a spell. But I casted one of my own that started her enough to keep her quiet message, as it spooked her long enough to break her mumbling. I tell you, if she started to mumble again, I would have muffled that mouth. Not to mention that we spotted some bandit following us. <sighs> and here we thought we got every last one of them. We reached our town, but the blabbering woman seemed to look at me more. I was able to persuade her to tell me what she needed to do via message. Something about casting a ritual on a specific location. Our clerk manager, the man who managed the bounty, got us the money and as requested brought us the gentleman who signed the bounty. It was no other than her husband. We asked a few questions on the matter, and it seemed that she had been muttering these words over and over for a while now. He was on his way to bring his wife to the north, where there are a specific doctor that would help her insanity. But the bandit struck, killed one of his friends, and took her. But actually, she went along with them, voluntarily, and she wasn't harmed. I found that suspicious. Upon much discussion, we volunteered to help the man secure the woman back to the north, so long as he waited a couple of days to do so, as Buzz already received a bounty much to our liking of 2,200 gold. I was able to deceive him to give us some extra platinum before we had started. We headed to the abandoned mine, where the bounty was set. We needed to clear the mine so that the person who signed our bounty was able to send his workers into the mine to pursue their work. As we entered, we found three small entries in the mine. Left, middle, right. Right seeing a little bit more death into the path of the map that was given to us. Left and middle seeing the least. We tried to burn some wood into the entries, but nothing happened. The right seemed like small enter, but the left blew the small out of the entry from the mine, so nothing happened. We were hoping to flush the creature out and face them as they come out. We decided to enter the left entry inside the mine and continue, unknowing to us that the camp of creatures were there. Barnes used his skill to sneak and find the area where the creature laid and, well, that is where the first section of the campaign ends. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>